good evening good evening and very good evening how are you guys how's everything and uh, i hope everybody is safe and sound in this quarantine time and i'm doing photography indoor so so what we can talk about today well we are going to talk about flash photography more specifically about uh, um, how to use flash in the available light well, we, before we dive into that, we have to make sure and understand what uh, Flash is all about and why we need Flash. Well, when you don't have enough available light or when you want to create some dramatic effect in your, in your image and you need some extra light regarding, regardless of the natural light to balance the shadows or if you are having then you need a uh, flash like for example if I'm having light sunlight from this direction and I'm having shadows in this direction so I have two options either first option is either I have to rely on the camera dynamic range so I can pull out the shadow details later in post processing or the second option is to use a flash and fill that shadow area and create a balance if I'm having sunlight from here. So there are countless ways, there are so many ways we can use flash. So what exactly the flash photography is? Well for me, because I have done a lot of flash photography back in the days, and to be very honest, this is the first thing which uh, I uh, used I start doing flash photography uh, by the way if you people find my voice not loud enough so I must apologize because my voice is like that I have the surgery happen eight years ago and I lost my one vocal cord so I'm just talking with one vocal cord every human got two vocal cords so my one is this one is paralyzed so my I cannot talk loud enough. I hope you can increase the volume of your devices to listen me out. So apologies in advance. Uh, moving forward about the flash photography. Well, when I started photography, I learned the very first thing about flash. And that's where I came across the work of uh, my teacher, uh, Joe McNally, who is a uh, brand ambassador for Nikon uh, from US United States of America he is like a commercial photographer for the journalist he done a lot of work and he is his work is mostly composed of using flash he used one flash two flash he used up to 30 flashes in one shot like he's really crazy about using the flash so he is basically trying to put up the light in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, in this, this. And he calculated each light ratios in a way to create an impact. Like it's a part of the scene, even though there is no flash. In, if you see the scene in real, there is no flash. So what, how we are going to use it? Well, this is a flash. You can use any. This is SB700. A simple small flash you can use with your Nikon camera. You can use any flash by the way, it doesn't matter. I'm here, I'm a Nikon user, so I am having a, a this Nikon flash. You can use Yongyo, you can use Nissan, you can use any uh, Canon flash, uh, uh, RT600, RTX, 580, or I believe. I don't know 600 RT or even you can use Sony or Fujifilm it doesn't matter flash photography is all about balancing the exposure in your image if there is no light that's the whole idea so how we are going to use it first thing you have to keep this in mind flash photography is double exposure yep let me repeat, flash photography is double exposure. 
how it's going to be done in exposure. Where do you put, for example, this is a camera, right? Okay, I'm putting a flash on this camera. Okay. It's a simple setup. I did nothing. I just did nothing. I just uh, put the camera. Uh, I just put the flash on the camera. Okay. So when I'm going to fire it, let's say I'm going to fire it, and you will see the exposure. You see? The flash fired. So what happened? What happened is the camera tells the flash to fire when the shutter opens. And by the time shutter opens, flash is going to fire and expose it. So we are having two exposures. The one exposure is the light which is in the room where I'm sitting. So that's first exposure. The second exposure is the flash itself. So I'm not only having the natural light, I'm also going to have the flash exposure in one shot. So that's how flash photography hits double exposure. The, the word typically where you use that double exposure in a way where you are shooting one scene on a, on a digital sensor and then you're going to expose the same scene to another area and get the effect of it. Well, that's, that's you can do that, but in reality, Flash exposure, it's double exposure. So I just mentioned you that there's a natural scene and there's a flash light. Both are combined together in one one shot. That's double exposure. That's one part. Now moving forward, how to control flash? Because flash in flash photography, everybody's scared. How to control flash power? It's very difficult. People are scared so much that they are not using flash in their images even though they can but they are afraid to control the light that's why they most of them are like natural light portrait photographer well we are just going to use natural light we can't use flash photography we just uh, use natural light we are natural light photographer anyways uh, so what we are going to do then it's very easy uh, okay, it's very easy. Sounds is not good. Well, my voice is like this, unfortunately. So you have to live with it. It's not your fault. Is my voice actually? Anyways, remember this is the very uh, the second point, which is very critical. You have shutter speed and you have aperture. Okay. The aperture controls the flash exposure. The shutter speed controls the ambient exposure. Like whatever the light is available at the background, whatever the background is, the background exposure is going to be controlled using shutter speed. The flash exposure is going to be controlled by aperture. Well, what that's supposed to mean? Well, it's easy. If you are shooting at f4, you are going to have more light. Even your shut, your flash exposure, the flash power, whatever the flash power is, it's constant. Let's suppose the flash power is one sixteenth of a one upon sixteen, one sixteenth, or let's suppose thirty two. Your flash exposure is thirty two. Okay, manual mode, and you are shooting from the same distance. The same subject and you think that flash power is too much even at the 32 so you have two options either to reduce the power from the flash go down from 32 to 64 or 128 okay you are reducing the power the second option is to reduce the aperture if you are shooting at f4 shoot with 5.6 or f8 right you will find the flash power is going to be reduced. So flash exposure is controlled by aperture. Alright. You can do one more thing. You can 
increase the distance from the flash of the subject okay but it depends where your flash is if your flash is on the camera and you are increasing the distance to reduce the power so you have to use a zoom lens to get the same frame do you understand if you are increasing the distance between the subject between the subject if you are shooting at this distance and flash power is too much so you have to increase it the distance if you are increasing the distance it means that flash power will be reduced by the time it reaches to the subject if it is this and its maximum power and you are increasing the distance so the light coming from the flash to the subject is going to be less but you have to use the zoom lens to get the proper frame which you had before so that's one way second way I mentioned decrease the aperture from if you are if you were shooting at f4 reduce it to 5.6 or f8 in this way you are cutting the power of the flash power okay in this way the less light is going to be reached from the camera to the subject the third way what it was reduce the flash power so you are not changing your distance you are still the same the camera and the flash okay you don't want to change the aperture because you want a specific depth of field you want f4 you want you don't want 5.6 you don't want f8 and you also don't want to change the distance because you are shooting with prime so the third option left is reduce the power of the flash so there are three ways you can change the flash power or the impact of the flash on the subject let me rephrase let me rewind there are three options you can use to control the flash you can control the flash power onto the subject number one you you increase the distance the number two you change the aperture if you are going to shoot with narrow aperture it cuts the power of the flash you will have less power of the flash reaching to the subject the third is to reduce the power of the flash by itself okay so there are three ways you can change the flash exposure now what about the ambient exposure like what's the ambient exposure in the background how you you just said that flash uh, uh, the ambient exposure or the background exposure is going to be controlled by the flash oh sorry controlled by the shutter speed yes exactly this is what I said the ambient exposure is going to be controlled by the shutter speed let me explain you how I am having a natural sunlight coming from here and I am having flash from here and I am shooting in this direction all right straight and I am at shooting at uh, let's suppose uh, uh, 100 of a second shutter speed I don't care what is the ISO I don't care what's the aperture I already explained you how to control the flash exposure with aperture so we are shooting with constant constant flash power we are shooting with constant aperture we are shooting with constant distance okay so all these three variables are constant I'm not going to change so it means that the flash exposure which is coming on my face in this direction is not going to be changed all right now this is the light natural sunlight coming in this direction all right so I am going to change we know that that we are going to change the shutter speed the overall and we are and we are not changing ISO we are not changing aperture why we are going to use that that if we are changing the shutter speed it changes the exposure overall of the image so when we are going to change the shutter speed it will impact that light it will cut down that light or it will increase the light background light imagine you are shooting a sunset we are shooting a model with sunset at the back beautiful sunset whenever you have 
sun behind and you are trying to shoot you know into the sun at any subject the subject always become dark okay this is the question that why do we need flash and sunlight this is a good question why we need sun why we need flash and sunlight imagine you have sun at the back and you are shooting me you are trying to shoot me with sun at the back my face becomes dark why because the camera dynamic range is not enough to pick up the details of my face if you are exposing with the sun at my back don't believe me try it try you will you will see whenever you are trying to shoot into the sun with somebody facing you that person face is always become flash oh always become dark this is where you need flash to fill that dark face to fill to push the camera dynamic range to compress the dynamic range of the camera and get the sub subject face exposed that's why we need flash so you need shutter speed to change the background exposure and you have three ways to control the flash exposure so this is the way it is now how to trigger flash there are many ways to trigger flash right uh first off we need radio triggers right the radio triggers can help us in triggering the off camera flash now what the hell does off camera flash flashes well it's it's easy this is on camera flash all right and it's one of the most boring position of the flash if you are going to shoot with this setup it going to be impact like it going to be impact like if you are using this kind of flash it's a pop up flash okay like point and shoot if you have point and shoot camera or if you are having a mobile all right mobile with the flash in it okay so this and this this flash that's tiny little flash you see this tiny little flash that tiny little flash and this flash works exactly the same there is no change so and you can see that on camera flash is very boring very boring it's going to be like point and shoot camera that's a small point and shoot camera and if you are you taking an image with point and shoot camera they using is built in flash it's ordinary nothing special and if i'm going to take my image using this pop up flash it's going to be resulting the same just like point and shoot camera so why the hell i am spending so much money on a dslr where i am only able to produce the similar results just like a small point and shoot camera right why i spend so much money i need different kind of result because i that's why i spend so much money on this okay so here is the thing when you want to do flash photography this is my suggestion to you guys always use off camera flash never 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 use this Now don't try to use this flash on the camera and take an image don't do that you will end up having very boring shots very boring shots and they are not going to be creative all right all right we have a question how do to decide between stable light source versus flash how do you choose uh stable light source means constant light source i believe it depends what you have in what kind of scenario you are if you have enough light enough constant source light let's say torch let's say let me show you okay let that's constant light all right that's constant light i believe you this is what you need if i'm having constant less kind of light all right on my face like from this direction or from this direction now i want you i want you to decide which direction looks more good this 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 
or light grays. That's Halloween. That's dark. Uh, light grays. Uh, that's kind of a uh, this position of the light. That's kind of interesting. This that's kind of a dramatic creating shadow over here. This is more dramatic. However, right. if I'm shooting in this direction, or if I'm shooting in this direction, this this is very boring. This is very boring. So normally we are shooting in this direction or from the top, from this direction where it's kind of a creating this uh, feeling. So I can shoot in this light if I want, but I have to increase the ISO and I have to use my camera on tripod because there's constant light. And if I move, this constant light source will not have enough uh, uh, duration of power where he can freeze me okay so uh, you just saw I just showed you that whenever I am moving my light source it creating different effects right so if I'm going to shoot like this my face like this it's going to be very boring so I have to move this flash on the top of the camera and I have to use like this, like this, like this, and like this in a specific way so I can create some dramatic effect of the light. This is called off camera flash. So I have to mount this camera on some kind of stand or if I have to ask somebody to hold me. Hey, can you hold this flash for me? Like anybody. Let's say. I asked my friend, hey, can you hold this flash on the face of Barber like this or like this, like this, like this. You can use either human which will be very difficult uh, or you can use a stand, a simple stand and mount that flash on that stand like this to create that dramatic effect. Alright, that's how you are going to make the light now the question is how I'm going to fire that thing how I'm going to control the power of that flash well it's easy in Nikon kids it's very easy actually because Nikon have their flash system it's a thing called CLS creative light system and Nikon creative light system there's a feature in every Nikon full frame of crop sensor camera D7000 series which supports the off camera flash. The D5000 series doesn't support, D3000 series doesn't support. Only D7000 series supports that. And uh, D500 supports, uh, supports that. Okay, support. Yeah. And all full frame cameras of Nikon supports CLS system. What CLS system does, the CLS system does is it basically lets you control the power of the off flash remotely. I can configure from I can configure from the camera the power and what kind of mode the flash is going to fire. Yep, I can choose from the camera. I don't have to go there to the flash to change its power then come back and shoot I don't I cannot do that because I still can control the power and I don't need radio triggers I don't need because I can fire this flash this flash using this pop-up flash from Nikon so Nikon CLS system helps you trigger this little tiny flash which is going to operate this big flash so basically there is a communication happens between this and this using pulses and these pulses basically communicates from the camera to the flash so quickly that it can the camera tells the flash when it needs to fire what power it needs to fire in what mode it needs to fire so so much happens 
in this communication. Canon also supports that. Canon do have this kind of system in their flash, but Canon have this uh, kind of a limitation where if there is any no line, they require line of sight communication. The flash needs to be in the line of sight to fire with the camera. All right. In Nikon, it doesn't. Even if the flash is behind me like this, it's behind me, and if I'm going to fire from the front, that flash is still going to fire. That's how sensitive the Nikon flashes are. I'm not praising. I'm just telling you that my what my experience with Nikon flashes is. Okay. So. I can control the power, I can control the mode and timing, everything of the flash using this pop-up flash. I don't need radio trigger, I don't need anything else. How am I going to do that? It's very easy. In every Nikon camera which supports uh, this uh, CLS system, you must go into this pencil icon. You see this pencil icon? In pencil icon, you go to key menu. Okay? In E menu, you go to E3. E3. It could be anything else, but go with E3 or where it mentioned uh, the flash control for built in flash. And flash can, and this is where in E3 menu, this is where you can control the power of the flashes. You can control the mode you are shooting in aperture or uh, manual mode or TTL exposure compensation, and you can fire different groups. Like if uh, so, I can fire one flash in group A and another one in group B and even I can use the built-in flash as a part of the exposure or not. It will fire but it's in your control how to use this thing as a part of the exposure or only use to trigger the off-camera flash. Okay. So I have, I just mentioned there are two groups, group A and B. Group A and Group B. So, if I have two flash, okay. If I have two flash, I can use this one in Group A and this one in Group B. Why I need two operates two separate group? For example, I am using this flash over here, and I want a specific power in this part of the frame. And I'm using this flash and group B because I want to expose for the background or I want to just highlight this part of the body and I want this highlight to be less in power and I want this to be high in power so I can control the two flashes independently that's where the group comes in so you can adjust the power of the two flashes individually you can control one power of group a separate this one separate so in this way i can have both both uh, we have another question does it needs to activate off camera flash needs to fire in camera flash well yep in order to fire the off camera flash you have to pop up this and fire but there is a protocol you have to make uh, this I hope you can see there is a thing called remote your flash must be in remote just make sure your flash is in remote that's all you need that's it now it's whatever you are going to tell from the camera this flash will obey whatever the flash power whatever the flash power or flash mode or whatever 
if you're trying to say from the camera that this flash will take it as an input and obey because it's in remote mode when the flash is in remote mode you it's it's like it's a dumb flash you can say whatever to this flash and it will obey because it's remote that's what it does so groups helps you to control the individual framing the individual exposure of flashes because if you want to increase the flash power you don't want other flash to increase its power in the same way that's why we have groups that's why by the way how to control how to use we have uh, I believe we have a request Anyways, the main idea is to how to use the flash in available light. Well, it depends on the scenario where you are. I my suggestion always use flash. It doesn't matter if it's Nikon, it's Canon, it's Sony, Fujifilm, Sigma, Yongyo, it doesn't matter. Whatever the flash you are using, try to use that flash in TTL. Now what the hell is TTL? TTL is basically uh, nothing. It's just the most easiest way to uh, use the flash. Most easiest way. Basically, in in this scenario, in TTL, you are telling the flash to do whatever by itself and adjust its exposure for you. <clears throat> Just a second, excuse me. <clears throat> Basically, uh, or TTL, in TTL mode, TTL is through the lens. In TTL mode, you are giving the control of the flash exposure to the flash itself or to the camera itself. Like, you are telling the camera excess the flash exposure I don't want to bother just I, I want to just click you control the flash exposure that's it this is what TTL means whenever you select TTL you are basically uh, telling the camera to take care of the flash exposure by itself so camera will take care of the exposure and this is where you need to understand what uh, TTL is how TTL is going to operate because it's uh, it's not easy well it's easy if you understand what it is and how it operates TTL is basically letting uh, the camera to control the flash and how it works let me tell you I'm going to be I'm going to explain in brief so I hope you guys can catch up imagine we have a scene imagine we have a scene and this flash is in TTL okay you dial certain amount of ISO certain amount of uh, flash, aperture and certain value of shutter speed in your camera and you put the flash in TTL that's it that's it you did nothing the only thing that you did is dialing the ISO aperture and shutter speed three things and you put the flash on on TTL okay this is what happens when you are going to press okay we have a question uh, who controls the flash output camera built-in flash sensor or flash itself Help me. This is what I'm going to uh, explain you in TTL mode. Who going to decide what's the flash output? Remember, flash is when you are putting the flash 
and remote or TTL, it obeys what camera is going to tell. So you need to understand how camera operates. Okay? This is what I'm explaining right now. If I am putting this camera and this flash in it and this flash in TTL mode and I have dialed certain ISO aperture and shutter speed into the camera and I'm pressing this button, that shutter button. A camera basically fire twice. Sorry, camera fire once but flash going to fire twice. And you don't know that because it happens so quickly. When you are pressing the shutter, okay, it tells the flash to fire a pre-flash. What pre-flash does? What pre-flash does is a certain, a very small pulse fires and imagine this is a subject, okay? The flare pulse fires, hit to the subject, okay? And it goes back to the lens to the sensor and imagine we have dark background we are shooting in low light very dark very dark just like that so imagine this is a subject this is a model and behind the model we have dark scenario so when pressing this the pulse fires hitting the model hitting the model and goes back to the lens to the camera and camera picks up the whole scene camera picks that that the model exposed and the whole scene at the back it's dark so camera knows that this is dark the scene is all dark the model is dark okay and the photographer which is me I have dialed a certain ISO certain aperture and certain shutter speed so it takes that input okay which I dialed and also the scene what it picks the scene from the first pulse which is dark so it says okay there is a dark scene and the photographer dialed this kind of ISO aperture shutter speed it mix into a blender and it comes up with a value all this calculation happens in millisecond it comes up with a value and it tells the flash that hey flash listen to me the scene outside it's dark why how I know because you fire a pre-flash so from the pre-flash I know that the scene outside it's dark okay so you have to increase the power and you have to fire after a certain amount of time with more power because scene is dark so flash take this input and says obey and it says all right sir i'll obey your command i will fire with more power and i will fire at this amount of time because photographer dialed a certain shutter speed so camera tells the flash fire at this time and fire with more power okay flash take this input say all right don't worry i'll do it and then flash fire at the shutter speed that you dial and with more power full power why because the scene is dark and when this whole happened in millisecond you see that image and you see why model is so overexposed model is so overexposed I need to dial I need to reduce power I need to reduce power because model is over is overblown I need to reduce power this then you dial flash exposure like minus 1 minus 2 or minus 1.3 or minus 1.7 whatever the flash exposure you dialed into the camera and then you fire again right same phenomenon happen pre pulse goes fire to the model goes back same aperture shutter speed ISO calculation happens with a pre-flash reading same thing phenomenon happen but this time you dialed minus flash exposure so in the calculation which this camera processor was doing into the blender which is mixing 
it makes it that minus one flash or minus two flash exposure which you dial. Let's suppose minus two. So it comes up with new value and it tells the flash that a hey, flash listen to me that idiot photographer that yeah that idiot photographer thinks he's smart and this time he dialing minus two flash exposure so whatever the previous value was you have to reduce power by two stops all right and fire do everything the same just like before but reduce the flash power two stops because the photographer the photographer dialed flash exposure flash accepts this command and say all right sir i'll do it no worries and it fires the final exposure of the flash this whole thing happened this whole communication happened in millisecond millisecond and when it fires with minus two flash exposure compensation you see the image and say yeah perfect now it's fine it's fine then you don't have to worry about flash that oh i have to dial half power quarter power one eight power or whatever or what kind of distance i'm shooting do i have to adjust this there is nothing to worry in this ttl scenario that's so easy this was the dark part but what if you are shooting in daylight if i am having a sun behind me okay and i want to shoot with the flash same thing happens same thing happens in the first time you are your flash exposure is zero you are not dialing any flash exposure you are letting the camera to operate okay now same model behind model behind model there is a sun okay this is the model please you fire ttl you fire ttl the flash is in ttl mode you fire pre flash goes to the model it hits goes back to the through the lens to the camera sensor there is a specific iso shutter speed aperture you dialed in okay you dialed everything camera picks up that pre flash and and says oh there is too much bright there is a sun this is too much bright and this this idiot photographer is dialing this kind of uh, shutter speed and aperture and iso and he wants to fire the flash is he gone crazy but he is the boss i have to do something this is camera thinks all right this is what literally camera thinks because it's a, it's simple code they it doesn't have the brain so based on those codes in or certain parameters camera thinks that this is too much bright and he still wants the flash to be fired because it's already bright outside i will tell the flash to reduce the power reduce to minimum okay because it's too already too much bright so i do that same calculation again and tells the flash that hey flash listen to me my flash said yes sir tell me the camera says to the flash that this idiot photographer <laughs> it's firing the flash in daylight all right and there is too much bright outside already there is a sun and he basically and uh, he basically wants to fire a flash so i want you to fire to the lowest possible value and you have to fire at this amount of time because it dials a particular shutter speed flash took this input and it says all right sir i'll do it don't worry i'll do it and flash fires the final exposure you see you see this flash okay you see the final image like what still so dark even though i put the flash and it's still so dark why is that you forget now you think i i have to increase flash power i will this time i'll take another shot and i will increase the power by two stops plus plus 
Expo here, Flash Exposure Competition. Same thing happens. Same thing happens. Now this time you are adding plus to Flash Exposure Competition. You fire again. Pre-false goes back. Hit the model. Sun is still there. After hitting the model, it goes back to the sensor of the camera. Camera picks up the value and he says, Oh, he did the same mistake again. But this time he's adding more power. So he wants me to add more power to the flash. Ah, you see, he's smart. Mm. So he tells, he took this value to the calculation and tell the flash that, Hey flash, listen to me. You fire, but this time you have to add more power by two stops. Flash took this input from the camera and says, All right, sir, I'll do it, don't worry. And it fires the flash to the bottom. It hits, goes, and it increases the power by two stops. So, whatever the flash power is, I don't know, maybe it's 18 or 116. So, it increased the power, let's suppose it's by 116. At uh, zero EV, so it increased by two stops, so one sixteen to one eight, so it's going to be one fourth. So it increased the power by two stops, and you'll see the results. Like wow, yeah, that's perfect. Now, uh, now it's fine. The flash power is fine. So the whole explanation that I told you, it's you have to understand what TTL is. If it's in the dark, if you are shooting dark, that TTL you have to reduce power. You have to dial negative exposure compensation flash flash exposure compensation if you're shooting in daylight you have to increase the flash power you have to understand how ttl works which i just explained to you now if you have understood so every time and trust me trust me once you know how ttl works it saves your life so much it doesn't matter which brand you are using i explain you the technical scenario which applies on any brand. If you are shooting in daylight, you have to increase power of the flash. If you are shooting in night, you are you have to reduce the flash power because of the TTL phenomenon. Okay, what will happen when the light house? I am I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand your question. What do you mean by when the lighthouse? I'm I'm really sorry for that. If you are talking about indoor lightning, then always use TTL. Trust me, my flash photography, 95%, 95%, I always go TTL. Always. And it always gives me like a 90% or 95% of the shots that I take in TTL. I want those shots. 90% or 85% are always on the spot. I don't have to change the flash exposure. It's always on the spot because I know how TTL works. So it doesn't matter which camera you have. Is there a maximum limit of shutter speed when you're using it with external flash? Yes, there is. Very good question, uh, Shri. There is a very good question. There is a limit. Of this well that's kind of a advanced area of flash which I believe we are going to cover some other time but let me give you in brief there's a flash uh, sync speed it's called flash sync speed it's typically for Canon it's 1 200 of a second some model supports 1 to 50 of a second and Nikon cameras is 250 by default 250th of the second. Thank you so much, Joy. You understand it. And there is a question about uh, your question about sync speed. The flash sync speed always use maximum 250. If you go to shutter speed above 250, you are going into the high speed sync mode. High speed sync is not one burst of the light, it's small burst with low power. So, in high speed sync, flash photography. You are getting less power but there will be pulses because you are shooting at high speed so there is not one burst 
small pulses. Google about uh, high speed how just Google how uh, high speed sync works in flash photography. Just Google that. There are lots of videos. Lots of videos. You will find how high speed sync works in flash photography. Let me tell you there is a channel on YouTube called uh, Snap Factory. You just write Snap Factory, one word. Snap Factory. In that channel, there is a playlist called Digital Photography One on One. It's nearly 200 videos. Among those 200 videos, there is a one specific video about flash sync speed and how it works. I really want you guys to go that and watch that video. You will love it. It will clear your concept about how flash photography and how high speed sync work. Okay, uh, maybe a nice explanation. Thank you so much. I have one question. What will happen in Lighthouse of the flash is not directly mount? What's the subject? Okay, maybe I'm late. Okay, let me try to understand your question. If this is a flash, alright, this is how flash mounts on the camera, and you are directly hitting, it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Do one thing turn the flash head like this. Imagine there is a ball, white ball, shoot to the model, but put the flash direction towards the ball. This is a white ball. So flash will fire. So if you are shooting like that, if you are shooting like that, the flash, the flash is going to fire with the ball and it goes to the subject. So it's not going to hard. It's going to be very easy going to be pleasing some fire the most common is to fire like this up if you are shooting indoor because that's the best way you shoot towards the roof roof is normally white so it hits the roof it comes back and gives you very glowing very nice light so if you're shooting indoor do like that flash tuck 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 all right, Ashish. We have another question from Ashish. Is tell about light modifier. Light modifier is itself a whole different world. Um, I used to think that umbrella is the cheapest way, not so good, and then uh, soft boxes, and we have variation of soft boxes, small soft box, big soft box, blah blah blah. Then we have another scenario, like. Uh, soft boxes and then we have the strip box or uh, octa all those things to be very honest in my I, I, I use them all I used octa soft boxes strip boxes reflectors umbrella I use them all I personally believe if you want to start flash photography always go with umbrella always go with umbrella just buy any cheap umbrella very easy very easy mount it on track on a on a stand and shoot through or bounce whatever it doesn't matter i try to use bounce like if you this is umbrella and this is a flash so the flash is like this, the flash firing into the umbrella and it reflects back to the model. I shoot like that. So, it's the most easiest and most affordable light modifier. I highly recommend. You will get a very beautiful light from the umbrella. So that's uh, my thinking. Uh, now it's almost one hour so if you guys have any more questions please do let me know and i will be more than happy to answer your questions about flash photography i hope uh, uh, you guys understood what flash is 
how we are going to use it. I tried to make a universal concept for you so it doesn't associate it with any brand because TTL applies in all brand and uh, how to fire off camera flash that something is brand dependent. The way I showed you is from Nikon. I never, I hardly, I, I used, I don't know, it's like six, seven years. I haven't used radio trainers. I always use flash. But the FP flash information, focal plane, FP stands for focal plane. It basically tells the camera if that thing is not enabled in camera, if it's not enabled, FP is not enabled, camera uh, flash speed maximum goes to 250. But if you enable FP flash, then you can shoot up to 8000 on the shutter speed. Any other questions regarding flash? Once you start using flash, trust me, it's very addictive. You will love using flash. I have done, when I started flash photography, I was so crazy. I was so crazy. Ah, uh, uh, very good question, Ashish. <laughs> well, In this lockdown, I am trying to, basically this lockdown helps me to push my learning more. Because I, I saw that I cannot go out, I cannot do shoot. So I have to do something inside. If I am not going to do, it's going to kill my learning. And this is exactly what happened. So I was feeling that I am going down. So I started learning macro. I hate macro. But I pushed myself for macro. There is now on Flickr you can see my work. I started with macro. And um, I learned looking into the small details inside the house. Take the shots. Uh, and I posting this on Facebook like try to capture that feeling of emptiness. Feeling of being isolated. Feeling like cast away. These type of things creative things and I took myself as a subject putting the camera on stand on timer and then I try to capture my self portrait or whatever it's on all my uh, Facebook profile and I'm making it public so everybody can see it so if you can go to my Facebook profile you will see the kind of images that I'm taking these days and I am pushing myself to evolve to learn new things See, and I put in cameras and lenses all around my room. So every time when I feel negative, I see a camera and I immediately start thinking about doing something rather than I feeling like, oh, I'm in lockdown. No. So lockdown is basically help me learning more stuff. And this is what we all need to do. Don't feel negative. Just push yourself every single time. Photography is all about learning. For me, I love learning photography more rather than doing photography. This is what I do. I love to learn photography rather than do photography. Yeah, that's kind of a strange thing, but this is how I am. What happened in that time? I mean, if we sync, it flashes continuously. No, a flash is not going to be glow at 1000 shutter speed. At 1000 shutter speed, actually, after 250, if you are shooting at 320, 400, 500 shutter speed, like, there is no one pulse, there are small pulses. That's what I told you. Go to YouTube channel, Snap Factory. In the Snap Factory channel, it's called Mark Wallace. Now it's named as Mark Wallace. In Mark Wallace, you will find a video uh, playlist called Digital Photography One on One. There are nearly 200 videos. Among those 200 videos, there is one video about flashing speed. 
just go on YouTube and write digital photography one on one flash high speed sync. You will find it. It's by Mark Wallace. Uh, YouTube channel is Snap Factory. You will, you will explain very well in that video. Alright, thank you so much. It's one hour done. I have to rush now for some of the things. And uh, it's a pleasure with you guys talking to you. Some really nice questions I have seen on this thread. And uh, keep that one thing in mind. Always ask questions in, in photography. Always. Regardless if it's stupid, don't shy. If you are not going to ask, you are not going to learn. I always ask myself every single day, what new I have to learn? What new I have to try? Because this is, I literally became my habit. I constantly have to do something new. Something. Doesn't matter. I learned a lot of technical things. Now I am moving towards learning aesthetics of photography. This is what I am doing in this quarantine time. Anyways, thank you all and I'll stay blessed, stay safe, stay home. I'll see you guys soon in future.